My name is Stephanie Gondula. I am a graduate student in Program and Maritime Studies at East Carolina University. Today we are um, near the base of the Currituck Lighthouse and we're recording the Corolla Wreck, which you can see in the background. We have um, archaeology field workers here, students in the field school recording this wreck. We've been here, this is our second day, and what we're doing is recording as many details as we can in order to get dis learn from the wreck, learn the type of people that constructed it, why it en ended up here. Ultimately, we are going to be creating an entire site plan. So each individual student out there is allotted a section of the wreck. They will record very diligently. They're recording every detail they can, um, fastenings, type of wood, all sorts of things. Um, and then they will we'll tape them all together here and create a, a site plan. And that's where it gets very exciting because we start to see the results of the field work that's going on out there and start to see the, the trends and the patterns in the ship construction. What we're doing here, the mapping process, is a very important part of archaeology. Um, after the field work is completed, we will have an entire site map that will be available for archaeology and history students to study for years and years as an analysis tool of the wreck. Um, clearly, this wreck is, is old. It's deteriorating, and we think it's as old as possibly 400 years. It will hopefully be going to the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum. But um, still, as you see, it's deteriorating, and this is, will be available for students all over the world, really, to study. I'm Nathan Richards. I'm an associate professor of maritime history and nautical archaeology in the program Maritime Studies, uh, East, East Carolina University. This is a, a total station. It's a standard piece of equipment that a lot of you'll see ar around the streets all the time, people are doing cadastral survey. Um, but it's an instrument that we use a lot for getting three-dimensional positions on uh, archaeological sites, whether they're sites in the beach or sometimes even underwater, we shoot the positions of the wrecks. Um, in this particular instance, we're going to, we use it to image the ends uh, and all the different uh, undulations in the shape of the wreck. Uh, theoretically, what we'll do after this is uh, get a three-dimensional model of the wreck uh, together, uh, merge it in a, in a computer program and uh, we'll be able to actually have a, a model that people can inquire and take other measurements off of afterwards. Basically what you do is you, uh, you set it up, it has a series of levels, bubble levels. This helps us level it so that it's uh, parallel with the ground. Uh, then, what, then what we do is we zero it, which is another way of saying pointing it to north. Um, and then we define that and then everything that we do after that is a measured angle from that zero or from that north and every movement we make of the instrument, whether it's up and down or around, is recorded through a data logger, which is a, a little computer, a little survey computer. And this actually will plot, uh, we shoot out a laser, and the, the length of that laser is a distance, and all of these measurements together then allows us to create a three-dimensional model or, or a series of points that then we create a model from.